Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you all for joining me here today. I hope you all had a great 10-minute break. Uh, so don't get ups into a black hole. Uh, today, what are we going to talk about? Uh, basically, I'm going to talk about two problems, and then I'll give two uh, solutions to these two problems uh, that you might face during uh, your GitOps practices. So the first one is going to be about pre-deployment, uh, pre-post deployment task or evaluations. And then the second one is going to be about observability for GitOps. So pre-post deployment task evaluations. Uh, this is basically, I'm like going to tell how you can uh, apply these uh, checks or tasks uh, for your deployment. Uh, uh, like you might use GitHub Actions or various other CI tools uh, to enforce certain task or evaluation certain SLO checks for your deployments. Uh, and for observability, uh, who, uh, who all here use Argo rollouts? Does anybody? Okay. Do you use, do you make decisions based on metrics or something? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, many times uh, developers make decisions based on observability or, no, not observability, metrics. So, these metrics come from different metric providers. Now, these metric providers can be Prometheus, Dynatrace, Datadog. So different metrics, uh, like your organization might be using different metrics from different providers. So it's uh, like it gets difficult to maintain all these integrations. So yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Rakshit Gondwal. I am a pre-final year student from India. I am currently working as a cloud engineering intern at uh, Summit Technology Group India. I'm also the approver for Captain Project. Captain is an incubating project for CNCF. And I've previously worked as a Google Summer of Code mentee for CNCF. And I was a LFX mentee for the Kaivarnu project. Cool. Now, the coming to the first part. Uh, over here, uh, as you can see, you might be using different tools to enforce various policies to validate, to, uh, to, validate, to test, uh, apply certain security rules for different environments. Let's say you have a dev environment and then you have a dev a prod environment. You might have different tests or you might be checking for different metrics. Like before a deployment is made to a dev environment, you might be like checking for a certain, like let's say available CPUs in your system. So you might be fetching that metric from Prometheus, let's say. And you're using GitHub Actions for this. So all this can be done, but it's pretty messy. Uh, so for this, what do I propose? Captain, has anyone used here Captain or heard about Captain before? Okay, so it's a very quick primer about Captain uh, that I'm going to show you about today. Uh, Captain basically has two operators, uh, the lifecycle operator and the, okay, uh, that's a mistake from my side. Uh, Captain has a lifecycle operator and the metrics operator. Metrics operator works for fetching the metrics from your observability provider and the lifecycle operator manages the lifecycle of your application deployment lifecycle like from pre-deployment checks to post-deployment evaluation task, everything, your promotion task, etc. Uh, so how does it work? Uh, so uh, when using Captain, uh, you will have to define CRDs. CRDs are nothing but custom resource definitions that comes with Captain. So for task and evaluations, you can define various tasks, pre-deployment tasks. Uh, let's say you want to run a certain code that in Python, uh, before your deployment has been made. And if that passes, then you want to move on to evaluation. Now you define a evaluation that I want to fetch this metric if the available CPU is greater than two, and then I want to be deployed, and then I want the deployment to be made. Now the de deployment is made. Now you move on to post deployment task. Now let's say the task can be sending a Slack notification. So you define this in a CRD itself, and then again, uh, evaluation. This can be anything uh, related to an SLO evaluation. Uh, what's the availability of your application. And to do this, uh, it's pretty simple. You define certain annotations and certain labels. Uh, annotations will be for your namespace and the task will be for your deployment. Uh, okay, uh, so this is uh, what I'll be demoing today uh, for the lifecycle operator uh, on how you can like, uh, what do you say? apply these pre-deployment task evaluation. So first I'll try to apply a resource. Then, I then I'll have a pre-deployment evaluation. 
this is going to be based on a certain metric. Then if that metric matches like our conditions, the deployment should be made. And post that, I have a deployment task. That should be done. And after that, deployment complete. OK. We can move on to the demo now. Cool. So here I have a basic potato head application. Uh, so the first thing, uh, where your application is going to lie? Inside a namespace. So what do you want to do is you want to define a certain, uh, define this annotation. That is, you want to enable captain inside, that cert inside this namespace. So captain is going to look in this namespace every deployment that is being in made in, in this namespace. So captain works hand-to-hand -hand with the Kubernetes scheduler, like before the 1.27 version of Kubernetes, uh, Captain has had its own uh, scheduler, but after the, uh, after the 1.27 uh, version, we are using scheduling gates uh, to like manage the deployment pod scheduler, etc. For the deployment, you'll have to define these three labels. These are uh, like, uh, you can say, a good practice, uh, that Kubernetes mentions you should have in your deployment. So you just need to define these three. And what Captain will do is, Captain has this feature of automatic app discovery. So <clears throat> it's going to automatically look inside this namespace and look for a deployment uh, with these labels. And it's automatically going to like identify if it's a workload or it's a certain app. So once this has been deployed, uh, we can define our pre-deployment evaluation. So this is a CRD, uh, Captain Evaluation Definition. Uh, over here, I've defined some, I've referenced something known as Captain Metric. Uh, I'll go a little bit more deep into this Captain Metric in my the second part of the talk. But basically, Captain Metric is something that you fetch from a metrics provider. Uh, it can over here, I'm fetching the number of available CPUs, and I'm fetching it from Prometheus. So you define the Captain Metrics provider. The Captain Metrics provider can be anything: Prometheus, Dynatrace, Datadog. You see it. Uh, how this helps is, uh, if you are not using Captain, you'll have to maintain all these integrations between all these tools uh, uh, to fetch these uh, metrics. But Captain does the integrations part uh, for you, and it unifies the way how you like fetch metrics from your metric provider. Uh, so we define this metric that we want to fetch. And so this evaluation means if this metric is going to be greater than one, the value of the metric is going to be greater than one, it should pass. If it's not, it should fail. The deployment should not be made. And for the post deployment, <coughs> I just have a simple console.log message that uh, the deployment, the deployment was successfully made. And this can be anything. It can be a Slack notification, et cetera. Uh, then yeah, you define a app context in which you define that this was my pre-deployment evaluation. This was my post-deployment task. Now for a scenario, if you are using this in your like local dev environment and you don't want uh, your deployment to fail every time, like you're just for testing purposes, you can change its setting to like, you can, uh, change the failure option to off and the deployment the deployment will be made but there will be a warning so this can be helpful uh, during testing uh, cool we can apply this so I have a Prometheus running on my cluster already uh, let's check the value of our metric first. Okay. So we're here. The number of CPUs. The number of CPUs that I currently have is two. So this thing uh, passes my pre-deployment evaluation. So this thing has passed. So the deployment should be working by now. Let's see, kubectl get odds in 
for Tato Cubes UTL. Uh, your uh, resources, uh, these captain resources should lie in the same namespace uh, where your application is. Cubes UTL. Okay, yeah, so it is running. Uh, if this uh, the pre deployment evaluation had been failed, it should have been pending. It should have been in the pending state, or then it would have been failed. But uh, as the pre deployment evaluation has passed, it is running now. And this is the post deployment task that we have. So this is running based on a Dino runtime, uh, the code that I just wrote. Uh, Captain also supports the Python runtime. Uh, it should be completed. Okay. It's completed, and we can check the logs for this. Cubes UTL. Okay. Oh, my bad. Okay, successfully deployed. So the demo worked. Uh, the pre deployment evaluation uh, ran, ran successfully. The post-deployment task ran successfully. Now, this, uh, this was a basic like uh, demo how you can enforce these tasks and evaluations for your deployments. Now, coming to the next part, <coughs> I call it Observatory Tools Sprawl. So again, uh, you use Argo, Argo rollouts, or you might be using HPA, or you might be using Keda. Keda. Keda uh, sorry if I pronounce it wrong. See? Uh, so you, you might be making decisions based on uh, these tools, Splunk, uh, New Relic, Prometheus, because certain metrics are available for Prometheus, but they are not available for Splunk. So you might be using different observability providers in your organization. Now the thing is, maintaining integration between all these tools is very difficult. Like, it's, it gets difficult to uh, manage all these integration. So this is where Captain Metric, Metrics pro Operator comes into play. Captain Metrics operator manages all the integrations for you. So as we just saw, you define the Captain Metric, you define the Captain Metrics provider. So this operator has two parts, the controller and the adapter. The controller is going to fetch the metrics for you and the adapter is going to expose the metrics for you. Now, these exposed metrics can be used with, uh, by various other tools such as HP or the Argo rollouts over, over here and yeah. The, as I just showed, these will be also defined in a CRD. So, okay, so what are we going to see in the next demo? Uh, we'll have this uh, sample, again, the potato head application in our cluster, and we'll have this Captain metric and provider de uh, deployed. It's going to fetch the metrics from Prometheus, and then we are going to apply HP over that. And if, th uh, like, if certain conditions uh, matches, then the HPA should automatically scale the pods to three. Okay. While this is getting deleted, I can get to the metrics part. Okay, again, I have this basic deployment over here. Now, for the metric. Earlier, it was a simple metric, but now, uh, the metric uh, we are defining, okay, let me explain line by line. So again, we define the query that we want to fetch from the provider. We define our provider over here. It's Prometheus and it's running on my uh, cluster on this uh, URL. Then we define the fetch interval seconds. This is the amount of time in seconds of, uh, uh, by which you want the metrics controller to automatically, automatically fetch the metrics value from your uh, provider. Then there is uh, a field for range. These, this range field is optional, but it gets very handy in certain situations. So this is uh, basically a time range. You define the interval. Interval means I want to fetch the metrics from the last five minutes. And then the step means I want you to fetch like the metrics for last five minutes in one one minute gap. And then you'll have five values, like five divided by one five. Uh, so you, I want you to make an average of all these five values and return me the uh, this uh, the final answer. So this uh, controller is going to update its value in the CRD status and also expose it via the Prometheus and the Kubernetes API. Okay, uh, we can metrics. 
uh, okay i'll go through the hpa part later uh, first we can apply our deployment okay the deployment has been created and then we can deploy uh, metric provider okay the provider and the deployment has been created now the prometheus is already running on my cluster right now and i can apply the captain metric now uh, Earlier, we were fetching this uh, available CPUs, but now we are fetching for this uh, CPU throttling uh, in this captain metric. So now we can uh, check for the, I should have that command. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the interval was five minutes. The value is coming out to be 2.83333. The step, uh, step value is one minute and the aggregation is average so all this uh, analysis part was done behind in the back end uh, by the captain matrix operator and yeah so now that we have this uh, metric value uh, you can use this uh, as i just said it exposes the matrix so you can use this in other applications over here i'm using it in hpa uh, you can use this in your keda or your uh, argo cd rollouts uh, over here so what I'm saying it, uh, saying it is that I want this deployment that I just created. The minimum replica should be one and the maximum replica should be three. Now uh, I'm like scaling it based on a metric that I just defined. Uh, it's the captain metric CPU throttling and if its value is greater than one, I want it to scale uh, at three uh, at three replicas, else it should be just one replica. Uh, we can apply this. Okay, and we can now watch this. Okay, let's pause. Okay, uh, right now, okay, yeah, it worked. Uh, earlier it was just one uh, replica set, but now as the metric was the metric value was greater than one it has started uh, scaling it horizontally and now we have three replicas over here similarly you can use the this metric value uh, inside other applications that you want uh, now what's more now these were just the two functionality that captain offers but what's next next so analysis uh, captain helps you to define analysis definitions inside your cluster that can help you with certain SLOs or SLAs to meet certain SLOs, SLAs. Uh, then you can get the Dora matrix. Uh, matrix. Uh, uh, Captain can deploy this Jaeger in your cluster and also the dash, some dashboard tool uh, with the help uh, of which you can uh, see the Dora matrix for your application uh, on basis of which you can make some other decisions. And then there is multi-stage app delivery. This is a pretty new feature that we have. Uh, so what? So the lifecycle part, how it usually looks like is, so first there is uh, the pre-task, pre-deployment task. Then there is pre-deployment evaluation. Then the deployment is applied. After that, there is post-deployment task, post-deployment evaluation. Then there is something known as promotion. Uh, for promotion, uh, you can define uh, like you define all these deployment eva evaluation and tasks for your dev environment. If all these uh, successfully run, what you want to, if you want to like promote your application to the next uh, environment, let's say to your prod from dev, you can mention uh, promotion uh, promotion task uh, in, with the help of captain and it will automatically uh, deploy it in your uh, next environment. Uh, you can read more about captain uh, on uh, the docs or you can reach out to us on the CNCF Slack on Captain channel. 